Hello, Naka, and welcome to For the Record. The new VAT rate has been in place now for about a month. People are slowly adjusting, and businesses have been told to comply and reduce their VAT rates wherever applicable. Now, a new task force has also been set up to monitor VAT rates in all businesses. And in studio with us, we have tonight members of the task force, the chief executive of the uh, Consumer Council of Fiji, Premila Kumar, and the chief executive of the Commerce Commission, Bobby Maharaj, who will be speaking to us about the work that they do and what should be happening on the ground in terms of businesses and the VAT that average Fijians have to pay. Uh, Premila and Bobby, thank you very much for being on the show. Um, it's almost a month into uh, the new year. Uh, VAT rate has uh, dropped or should have dropped uh, in any case from uh, uh, to, to the new rate of 9%. Your task force has the very uh, difficult job of keeping an eye on operators, on businesses, and wherever VAT rates should have dropped. Uh, looking back on the last three to four weeks, how have businesses responded? I'd like to begin with you, Bobby, because the Commerce Commission is the regulatory arm. Uh, thank you. Um, in fact, let's say if you look at uh, from 1st January, uh, if I look at the stats that we have till uh, today, um, we deal with three types of uh, complaints, so let's say referrals uh, as far as vest, uh, uh, vet issues are concerned. The first one is that uh, complainants can come down directly to FCC and file a complaint. Two, uh, we also receive referrals from Consumer Council of Fiji and uh, FRCA. Uh, the third source of information for us is the price surveillance that we did uh, before 1st January and we are continuing to monitor the prices, let's say, on a weekly basis for these goods and services. Now, so far, what we have noted is, let's say, if you look at the data up till midday today, uh, we have, let's say, assessed about 125 uh, traders, and of which 63 are uh, suspected to be in non-compliance. So that's almost like 50% compliance and 50% non-compliance. The highest number of non-compliance issues have come from the Western Division followed by Central Eastern, and the lowest number of infringement that we have noted so far is from the Northern Division. So that's uh, how we have been trying to monitor these things so far, and uh, the state so far doesn't provide a very glossy picture as far as uh, the traders' uh, conduct of reducing the price is concerned. Well, I mean, uh, 63 suspected cases, uh, three weeks into the new year, this sh there should be no room for people to say that uh, we don't know how to do it or we haven't been able to catch up. Uh, Pramila, do you think this is deliberate? You are the watchdog for the people. I think it's very much it's deliberate. Uh, the reason being, it's interesting to hear how the private sector is reacting. Some of them are saying we are confused, we don't know how to apply that. I find that very strange because FERCA has been putting out uh, <coughs> paid advertisements in the paper and even showing the calculations. And if you go to FCC, uh, Fiji Commerce Commission site, as well as FERCA site, all that information is there. And what are you confused about? If FERCA is there to assist you, you should be asking for help and, and get, get it done. But we think uh, the intention is deliberate. Uh, the idea is to profiteer, and that's what they're doing, because this is something they have been doing all the time. I know VAT reduction has taken place, uh, you know, from switching from higher figure to lower for the first time, but when it comes to duty reduction, which has been happening in almost each and every budget that we have seen in the country, uh, duty reduction has never been passed on. So they're applying the same tactics even for VAT reduction. So uh, uh, are we looking at uh, uh, traders uh, in effect double dipping. You, you, there's no reduction in VAT and uh, also no reduction in duty, both of which are supposed to be carried forward to, to everyday uh, uh, buyers, to consumers. Is that, Bobby, is that, is that what could be happening? Yes, I, I think there is uh, a strong possibility that that's what is happening. What, what we have noted, let's say, in terms of the conducting the interviews with some of the traders, is some of them have bluntly said that uh, we haven't reduced the prices because while the VAT has come down, our markup has gone up. So basically what they are doing is either trying to increase their markup, you know, so the price remains the same, or they are claiming that the cost has gone up but they are not able to substantiate that. Uh, I think the same thing applies, let's say, to the items on which the duty has come down. For example, let's say if you look at the duty on the new tires, has been substantially reduced. 
But when we are carrying out our assessment uh, this week in terms of how well the uh, new tyre dealers have uh, reacted to the reduction in duty from 32% to 5%, what we are noting is that there has been a very minimal reduction in prices, if any. Now, if you look at for tyres, what we should be expecting is, let's say, a duty reduction from 32 to 5 means 27, plus wet reduction from 15 to 9, there's another 6. So, if you look at it, it's almost like a 33% reduction. Now, if a tyre that was previously retailing at $200, let's say, if you pass, let's say, almost like 25% of 32%, the consumer should start visibly seeing the difference in prices. Let's say if in case your cost has gone up by 2 to 3%, in case there has been some adjustment to your factor cost, but from 33%, generally if you even pass 25%, mm. a $200 item should now at least cost you about 150 But this is not visible in the market. The prices have dropped by 50 cents, 60 cents, let's say a dollar or two, or there has been no movement in prices. Mm. Are you seeing a lot of people uh, not accepting this sort of behavior? Do you get a lot of complaints, or are people still trying to figure out how the VAT reduction and the duty reduction should actually be affecting them? Do, do Fijians know what to do in these cases? Uh, Premila? I think uh, the, uh, the consumers out there, they, they know uh, and they know what to expect, uh, and that is uh, price reductions, and that's what they don't see in the marketplace. So they have been lodging complaints, they've been asking query, but I can see their frustration as well. Uh, they're frustrated that nothing is happening in the marketplace, and I agree with them. Uh, what's the point of talking about this issue in detail, that this is what the traders are doing, when we are not even charging them? We need to enforce the law. And if we are saying there are penalties, have we issued infringement notices? Have we taken anyone to court? And we are towards the end of the month. And obviously, if you're not going to do that, consumer confidence is at the lowest. And gradually, they will lose confidence, and they will say, let's not even talk about VAT reduction. All right, and on that note, we'll take a quick break. Stay with us. We'll be back shortly. Welcome back to the show. We're talking about the VAT and duty reductions that have come into effect and we have with us in studio uh, the CEO of the Consumer Council, Pramila Kumar, and the Chief Executive of the Commerce Commission of Fiji, Bobby Maharaj. Bobby, um, Pramila brought up the point of prosecuting people and, and issuing infringement notices. There have been reports in the media in the past few weeks that certain traders who have been identified as, as having subverted the VAT and duty reductions uh, are being taken to task. But has anyone actually paid a fine? Have they been fined? Uh, generally, let's say the role of Consumer Council and Fiji Commerce Commission in this case is more so to become, let's say, the eyes of the consumers on the ground. Uh, from the Commission's perspective, let's say, uh, we cannot impose fines under the VAT degree. FRC has that powers, and uh, let's say from 1st January, uh, we have been referring the cases, and of course, these are the cases which have also been highlighted in the media. Uh, we are not aware of any traders being fined so far. Now, what the Commission has also done is, let's say, we have seen certain traders putting notices uh, in the shop somewhere that says, dear customers, please note that all our prices have been adjusted to the new VAT rate. Now, what we have done, we have gone an extra yard and saying, let's identify some of these traders. Because if in case they've put up those notices and they have not passed the benefits, that amounts to a case of misrepresentation. Now, so far, we have identified a couple of these traders and we are now preparing our papers to file charges. Uh, apart from what FRC might do, which so is... You, what you're saying is you're basically looking at how the Commerce Commission can dig its teeth into yes, this. Yes, that's, that's what we're trying to do at the moment, is uh, trying to identify if in case they are engaging in false and misleading representation, which is an offence under Section 71. Now, one of the subsections of Section 71 says that uh, you cannot depute to the customers that a price advantage exists if it does not. Now, by putting notices that the price has been reduced for VAT, and if you have not done that, you are creating that false impression that you have reduced the prices. There is a price advantage now. And if you have not done so, then we are now pursuing a couple of traders for that offence as well. And so, all of these avenues that uh, traders are using, they are saying uh, the markup has gone up, the costs have gone up. Um, have they been able to justify these? Uh, if, even if they say it's open market forces, there is competition, and we are competing, and we have marked up, the, the, the prices for these items. Is that still a justifiable explanation? 
Uh, let's say so far we've interviewed about eight traders. No? We've referred about 12 cases to FRCA, which definitive um, uh, evidences. Eight were interviewed, and it looks like that whatever explanations they are giving or whatever documents they are producing is not the genuine documents. We have had cases whereby the traders have said, my prices was $2.13, no? reduced to 195 And when you go and check on their sales records, the prices were always 195 then some have made allegations that uh, the supplier has changed the prices. When you go back and check with the suppliers, their wholesale documents, the supplier price has not changed. So, so far, none of the traders have been able to prove that we have not been profiting from wet reduction. Uh, Pramila, this is, I suppose, where the frustrations of the consumers come in. You've been talking about people who are coming in and, and saying, what is the use of reducing VAT if you can't apply it and if you can't find people who don't uh, adhere to it. Would you say today to, to everyday Fijians not to let this slide? Absolutely. And uh, what I would like to urge consumers to do is that we have to work in solidarity. In other words, we have to keep mounting this pressure, whether the pressure is on FERCA, whether the pressure is on the traders. We just have to do that. Because if we're not going to do that, obviously the issue will fade away. We have to keep the issue alive because in, in real terms, the consumers are not benefiting. And I think consumers should be angry about that. Because the government's intention was to reduce the cost of living through VAT uh, reduction. And if this is not happening on the ground, then obviously consumers should not give up. They should mount this pressure. They should uh, contact the council, commerce commission, and, and lodge the complaints with us. And we will mount the pressure on FERCA because all the eyes are on them. Uh, they need to act fast, uh, and uh, we hope that very soon we'll hear some good news. This is the first time that uh, this sort of task force has been set up where you have the watchdog, you have a regulator, and you have the tax authority. Unfortunately, uh, we couldn't get somebody from FERCA in, but uh, since this is a collaborative effort, and since you are working together to see that the benefits do trickle down to the everyday Fijians, do you think what's going on in the market right now is, is sort of a failure on, on the task force uh, itself. Still being early days, I recognize that, but mm. the whole intention of the task force is to see that, uh, you know, people benefit. I think the, the purpose of the task force was to uh, ensure that the complaints that we receive is addressed. And in the task force, the work is already uh, assigned. We have a clear understanding of who is doing what. Uh, consumer Council's job is to receive complaints and we are supposed to do the preliminary uh, investigation of that com uh, complaint. If there is a clear-cut evidence, we refer the matter to FERCA. And so far, clear, based on clear-cut evidence, we have referred eight cases to FERCA. And there were a number of cases we have referred to Fiji Commerce Commission because it requires further vetting in terms of getting the information. So from the Council's perspective and what I see every day being flicked from uh, Fiji Commerce Commission to FERCA, we are doing our job. Bobby, w would you say that uh, uh, as things stand, the task force uh, is fulfilling its purpose? Yes, it does, uh, let's say to a great extent because uh, apart from, let's say, the last stage which is uh, dishing of the spot penalties, uh, what we have seen is that traders are now realizing that they can't escape these things. It's just a matter of time now. No? Uh, we have got, let's say, Consumer Council of Fiji officers who go out on the grounds. We've got the Fiji Commerce Commission officers who go out on the ground. We have even seen FRC officers doing some vet audits. So what the traders have slowly started realizing is that they can't find their way out. It's just a matter of time that things will start rolling out. Mm. Uh, there have been 125 traders that the Commerce Commission has, has uh, audited. The Consumer Council is still receiving complaints, but there is still a large section of the commercial sector out there. I, is it a sort of David versus Goliath uh, sort of task that you have on your hands? Absolutely. Uh, on one hand, we don't have that kind of resources to really go into each and every store. It's humanly impossible. And this is where consumer solidarity is required because uh, it's the consumers who are buying goods and services on a daily basis they would be uh, aware of what's happening in the marketplace. And I think that was the reason why the government uh, is willing to set up Consumer Helpline, uh, is to assist consumers to make that simple call.
to the council. So uh, in terms of this big fight, yes. Uh, and uh, because over the years, uh, this is how things were done, and that's how it's been continuing. So the idea now is to change the way the business is being conducted on the ground. All right. With that, uh, we've come to the end of uh, another segment. We will take a short break, and we'll be back with you shortly. Good evening. Welcome back to the show. We're talking about VAT and duty reductions, which came into effect. And our guests, the Chief Executive of the Consumer Council of Fiji, Pramila Kumar, and the Chief Executive of the Commerce Commission, Poppy Maharaj. Now, um, the way we've been talking tonight is as if uh, all traders are deliberately taking advantage of VAT and duty reductions and filling their pockets. Have there also been cases where traders have, you know, followed the, the government policies uh, and applied them accordingly? But the, the, the other flip side to the question is, how does this reflect in percentage? How many traders are abiding and how many aren't? If we're talking about 63 suspected cases of, of uh, people uh, abusing the, the VAT reduction, uh, that's an open question to both. Yeah, generally, let's say, if you look at our stats so far, it's like a 50% 50 50 of them are complying and 50% are not. So what that signifies is that not all traders are bad. There are traders out there who have basically adhered to the advice. They have basically tried to embrace the policy that has been announced by the government. And they are doing pretty well as far as compliance is concerned. Uh, we got another 50%, as I have said, that are not complying. And I think this is where the attention is at the moment. Hmm. And Pramila, how many complaints average do you get on a day uh, in relation to VAT and duty reductions? I would say in the last uh, two weeks, the, the statistics that we have is more than 50 complaints. And daily? Is that daily not, or not is that daily. A, co a collection? Uh, collection in the last two weeks. Uh, and out of these uh, 50 complaints, we have referred uh, about 14 to Commerce Commission. And uh, we have also referred uh, complaints to FERCA. And the other complaints that required uh, uh, explanations so that consumers can understand things better. Mm -hmm. uh, there was confusion in their mind, and we had to clear that. Of course, there, there are certain uh, uh, issues that we will clarify shortly in regards to uh, STT and whatnot. But uh, I'm curious about the, um, uh, is it the big businesses who usually do this, you know, the multi-million dollar companies, or is it the corner shop at the, uh, at the end of the road who usually infringes uh, uh, these, these VET policies? I would say across the board, I wouldn't say that it, this is what the big businesses are doing. It's just uh, who the owner of the business is and what the intention is. If they see this as a good opportunity to make more money, they are there to do that. So I cannot brand it by saying, okay, this is what we have found. But when you look at the complaints, we have received complaints against bread shops, uh, telecommunications sector, draperies, uh, spare parts, shipping services. Uh, supermarkets um, and, and, and a large number of other areas. So it's across the board. Um, mm, and, and is that something that the Commerce Commission is also experiencing? Yes, we have also noticed a similar trend that uh, it's almost like uh, you can pick up traders uh, at random basis, different sizes, different locations and different types of operations. And we have seen evidences that uh, there is some level of non-compliance in almost all sectors. M when we talk about consumers uh, having to be aware what are some of the signs that uh, they should look for? I mean, obviously, the first and most obvious is if the price hasn't changed, mm. that's a warning sign. But uh, there may be some hidden costs that, that have been introduced and whatnot. So h how does a consumer deal with that? Uh, I think one of the best things, in case they have got uh, their old receipts or something at home, they can always compare the prices. You know? uh, two, they can always uh, compare, let's say, maybe in terms of how they can recall what they were paying last year and what they are paying now. Now, in doing so, they must realize that they should not be comparing the special prices with the normal prices. No? So if they were looking at, let's say, a product price on 26th of December, they have to be mindful that uh, they're not talking about the special prices because first January is just immediately after the festive season. So a lot of items may have been on a special. So to get a clearer picture, what they should do is always try and see what was I paying in the absence of a discount or in the absence of a Christmas special or a New Year special, and then compared to what they are paying now. Mm. And, and uh, what tips would you uh, give to consumers? I think one of the uh, 
problems that consumers will always face is the way the receipts are issued. And I think this is one area that needs to be fixed. Um, you get a receipt which fades away within a few days. Uh, where is your evidence? There is none. So we need to improve the quality of the receipts and the information that goes on the receipt. For example, the number of uh, restaurants and bistros that are STT registered. Now, how on earth a consumer will know that the restaurant they are in uh, is STT registered? They will never know. And even if they are paying a higher price for the food they are eating, they will, they will always say, oh, maybe uh, because of the VAT and STT uh, registration that has taken place. But the reality is some of these restaurants may not be registered for STT. They may not be registered for VAT, and yet they're taking the opportunity of STT. They're increasing the price. So what I would like to say is consumers are the victims here. How would they get the information so that traders are not taking advantage of the situation? And this is where I would like to see uh, more improvement uh, in the receipts. And uh, I will be um, uh, talking to FERCA uh, that this is one area they need to tighten up if, you, if they want to make the whole system more transparent. Mm. How is the task force working out? Uh, it's been, what, three weeks now? Uh, is, it, is it rolling along? Are you facing uh, certain difficulties given the challenge of the three different entities having to collaborate? Uh, not really. I don't think there is any challenge uh, for the task force. Uh, we have met a couple of times. We have discussed the issues. Uh, for example, uh, some hands-on cases that we had picked. But besides that, we also very clear, uh, it is also very clear in our mind uh, what the responsibility of each organization is in the task force. Hmm. The responsibility of each organization brings me to the Commerce Commission, which is a, a legislative body with its own uh, powers and authorities. How are you uh, fitting into the task force and how is it helping the Commerce Commission achieve its objectives? I think so far, let's say, if you look at the uh, work uh, in the last couple of weeks, uh, I think it's very well coordinated. Uh, I think all the key stakeholders are playing their part. You know, as I've said, uh, uh, what we have seen is that uh, there's always uh, a very high level of uh, cooperation when it comes to resolving the issues. I think uh, what we've also seen from Bonzima Council of Fiji even is when we need their staff for interviews and so forth, they basically drop everything and then come down. So that's, that's a good sign that the task force is working. You know? I think the only barrier at the moment is that uh, the climax of it is sanctioning of penalties. Okay, and with that, we've come to the end of yet another segment. Uh, time is fleeting, but we'll be back shortly. It's time for another break. Good evening. Welcome back to the show. We will continue discussions. I'd like to find out which uh, areas there is confusion, uh, in which areas there is confusion with, with uh, consumers. Uh, for example, I know uh, cigarettes. Uh, people expected a drop in the price of cigarettes, but uh, there's been uh, new levies introduced. What are some, some of the, the confusions that the Council and, and the Commission have, have been uh, made aware of? Uh, public uh, consumers are confused about the cigarette price. They're confused about uh, the fees and charges that universities will be applying, whether it's VET exempted or not. They're also confused about uh, whether the charges of lawyers, um, medical practitioners will come down or not. Uh, they would like to understand why some of the restaurants and coffee shops have increased the prices when, when the VAT has come down. Um, the other confusion uh, in relation to uh, certain products, for example, perfumes, deodorants, etc., where the prices uh, duty has come down, and uh, it, it has come down substantially uh, from 32% to 15%, and plus 6% reduction in VAT. And yet, when you go to some of these uh, uh, duty-free shops and bigger shops, you find that the prices are really not reflecting. Uh, so they are asking um, why uh, it's only reduced by $1, $2, or $3 when they have heard the budget and, and the duty had come down. So these are some, some types of, uh, some types of uh, queries they are making. And this morning, I also received a query from 
a lady in the Western Division who, who is interested in knowing whether the price of dialysis will come down. So there are all these questions that, that's in the public's mind and they want uh, clarification. Mm. And, and how do they get clarification? Um, interesting point about lawyers' fees and, and doctors' fees. Uh, of course, the dialysis charges, um, there is no prescribed fee. There is no set limit. It's, it's usually market forces that decide these costs, especially lawyers and doctors' fees. So how do, how do they figure out uh, how this works? Um, or okay. One thing I would like to make this very clear, I mean, I'm glad you asked this question. And what I would like to make a point very clear here is that VAT is a matter between a consumer and the government. It has nothing to do with the trader. Traders should not see VAT as their profit or use VAT uh, to, to fix uh, whatever business acumen they want to, or whatever business sense they want to make out of it. It is a simple process where government has, had introduced the VAT. VAT had to be paid by the end user. If the government has reduced the VAT, the end user should be paying less. That's the logic. So all the other excuses that are coming in, that has nothing to do with the VAT. VAT is a simple process where consumers should see gain. And when they're not seeing gain, they're screaming out and saying, why? And it's a logical thing, because as I've said, it's a tax imposed by the government, and the consumers are paying. Businesses are the facilitators. A they're supposed to collect. Sorts, yes. Yeah, just collect and give it to the government. So don't use that, that you know, this happened and that happened. No, it's nothing to do with you. Mm, Bobby, um, uh, I'm, I'm still interested in, in uh, how one would assess lawyers' fees and, and medical fees. Generally, if you look at uh, lawyers and doctors or, let's say, medical fees, uh, let's say, as far as lawyers are concerned, usually, let's say, even uh, without VAT adjustments, their invoices are designed in such a way that they'll put down their basic fee and then add VAT to it. Now, for example, if you had done your agreement with a lawyer last week, yeah, let's say a uh, sales and purchase agreement, and if it was costing you $300, they would say 300 plus 15% VAT. Now, if you go back today, they should still say 300 plus 9% VAT now. Because usually their fees is not VIP, mm -hmm. the display fees. It's like you do the fees, then add the tax component. So they can check on that. Uh, similarly, for doctor's fees, let's say. You know, for example, if you had been doing... Um, to a doctor, let's say, for basic consultation. If you are paying 35 last year, and if you are still paying 35 this year, you can always flag it to us to say, why has it not changed? Hmm. So uh, it's, it's sort of the service sector uh, where most of the confusion would, would, uh, would arise. Can, can, can you elaborate on that? Yeah, and, and the other thing I think uh, that is important for the public to know is that uh, when you are looking at VAT adjustment, a number of them are confused in terms of how should it be adjusted? For example, if something was priced at $100 now, some are assuming that it should be 6% of 100. So if that comes to 6, they'll say, well, 100 minus 6 should be my price that I'm paying now, which is 94. Now, a good way to check the VAT reduction should be whatever you're paying before, you divide that by 1.15. And then you multiply by 1.09 because the VAT is adjusted by a VAT factor, not necessarily 6% reduction. So I think that is another area that they need to keep an eye on. If something was worth $100, they should not be expecting the price to be 94 It could be slightly above that because it's not a flat 6% reduction. It's the adjustment to the VAT component. Mm. And how you go about doing that is whatever you're paying last year, just divide that by 1.15, and then you multiply that answer by 1.09. You'll get an arm's length price in terms of what you should be paying now. Mm. And well, that's uh, bound to help a lot of consumers. Uh, who would have been walking into the shops and trying to calculate. Uh, I've, I've done it myself a few times and tried to uh, uh, figure out how the VAT component has factored in. So with that calculation, they should get a much better indication. And do you have consumers coming in who've done their own calculations? And oh, had, had absolutely. Um, we've got consumers who have uh, sent uh, emails to us. They've shown their calculation and they're questioning why uh, the price has not come down or why it has come down by only a few dollars. So we show them our calculation <coughs> and we send it to them and, and, and justify that this is the correct price. So what we normally do is the FERCA had already advertised uh, how to calculate VAT and we have scanned that and we've kept it. So whenever a consumer raises an issue, we, we send that information. 
uh, after showing the calculation. Hmm. Now, looking ahead, uh, we've got another 11 uh, months in the year where VAT will be an everyday factor. People will be paying VAT without even knowing that they're paying, uh, you know, uh, in, in different ways and means. So, how aware should a consumer be about their spending habits now? Because uh, there is that, that, that mindset, VAT has gone down, uh, prices have gone down and I will have more in my pocket. I can spend a bit more. Of course, it's good for the economy, but uh, the, the consumer watchdog would always advise caution when spending. Actually, that is not the case, uh, I must say, because consumers have experienced that they're still paying the same price. And uh, that's why they are very, very upset about the whole issue. So uh, I think they're more concerned about why the prices have not come down, because they would love to use more money to buy more things. But they don't have the money to buy other things. So they're not contributing to the economy per se. All right, because they don't have additional funds well, to do that. We've come to the end of another segment, uh, Pramila. Uh, we'll take a short break. Good evening. Welcome back. We're just about to wrap up for the evening. But um, Pramila, from what you've been saying, uh, even in the last segment, uh, this so seems to be some sort of personal frustration that, that you're trying to cope with based on what's happening in the market. Uh, how, how much of a problem do you think it is what's, what's going on right now? We've heard from uh, uh, Bobby Maharaj. He has clearly stated, and, and when he has spoken, he has done his homework by checking all the records. So based on that information and also uh, what we hear from the public, and in fact, one of the media had also reported that the complaints are going to Prime Minister's office and uh, to other uh, influential people in the country, and they are concerned. So um, my worry here is that if we just lose the momentum, it will be life as usual, and uh, people will just say, well, it's no point complaining. Uh, Businesses, not making, businesses yeah. will, get, will start to get away with it? Is that, is that what you're afraid of? What I'm saying is that businesses will say, well, no one is watching now, no complaints are coming, so just continue doing what they were doing. So we have to correct that situation uh, to, to have this consumer confidence in the market. Mm, Bobby, what would you say to that? Uh, I'd just like to add two things maybe. One is that uh, we should not uh, always uh, look at saying that the bet is not having an effect on the consumers positively. Mm. For example, if I go back to first January, 2016, uh, the reduction in prices of unleaded was by 21 cents. Now, had it not been for the VAT reduction, the prices have only dropped down by 11 cents. So, 10 cent reduction on first January was purely attributed to VAT. Number two, in case the government had decided not to reduce VAT on LPG, the price of few, uh, LPG on first January would have gone up. But what we would have seen is that the net effect was a reduction in price by about 3 to 4 percent. So there has been some uh, good uh, uh, gains by the consumers as far as their reduction is concerned. Now as far as moving ahead is concerned, what we are doing from the Commission's perspective is we are going to continue our month-to-month -month price surveillance. And whenever we come across perhaps a suspected case of price increase, we will definitely demand there for explanation. We will obtain documents to see what is the cause of the increases. Now consumers also have to be mindful of that we import a lot of goods and services. So if in case the prices have reduced in January, it could be a possibility in the next consignment due to the exchange rate factor, due to the supplier size price increasing, there should, could be some increases. So we have to be balancing this very well because VAT is not the only factor that will determine the price of goods and services in days to come. There will be other cost components, there will be international supplies, there will be exchange rate factor, you know, there would be let's say compliance with the other uh, cost and so forth. So we have to be mindful of the fact that while VAT has reduced the prices, it will continue to ensure that whatever you are going to pay in March, you will still pay 6% lower. Mm -hmm. And with that, what is the commitment of the Commission and the Council to the consumers for the rest of the year? Uh, from our side, I think uh, what we have said is that we are going to continue the exercise uh, throughout the year. Uh, we will always be questioning the traders that are suspected of not uh, assisting the government in terms of passing their benefits to the consumers. To the consumers, uh, I think they have done very well so far. No? If you look at the number of complaints they are referring to, the way they are calculating, the, the way they are keeping the records, and we wish to ask them to continue the records. Now, since they know 
that the VAT effect would be monitored. Maybe if they have not been doing in the past, keep your January invoices, photocopy it, keep it in the file. Then you compare the price that you are paying in February and you continue. And if in case you are coming across a situation that the prices are inflated or some forth, please flag it to us. Mm. I would like to make a comment, not really answer your question, but make a comment to what Bobby has just said uh, about the LPG and fuel prices. Well, my, my response to him would be that the reason why the prices have come down is because a government agency is reducing the price, which is not happening with the traders. So there are a number of uh, zero-rated uh, items where the VAT has gone up and is, is now applied for the first time. And most of these items come under uh, uh, Fiji Commerce Commission because they are also price-controlled price control. items. They were zero rated, but they're also price control item. And because it's a price control item, because Fiji Commerce Commission sets the price, that price, you can see VAT reduction. But when it comes to other traders and service providers, you don't see that. When you expect uh, businesses to be loyal, uh, to be faithful. Faithful, and, and yes. Uh, you don't, you, they try to uh, make Absolutely. their own gains. But my last advice to the consumers is don't give up hope. We have to mount the pressure. We have to continue with this battle. That's why consumer movements are there. We, we should not just sit back and accept this. We must voice our concern. Uh, never mind, we will not get the result immediately, but just keep pushing hard. And let's see what we get at the end of the day. All right. Thank you very much, Pramila and Bobby. I'd like to thank you both for coming on the show. And uh, best of luck to the task force and, and best of luck with the work that you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Set. And uh, that is the end of the show for tonight. Remember, if you have comments or questions, you can contact us for the record at fpc.com.fj. That is it for tonight. I will see you next Sunday. Good evening.